Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Ahabatifillah, the question was asked, Assalamu alaikum. I heard this hadith from a person who was upon the Khawarij mentality. I wanted to ask, what is the correct understanding of this hadith? Tariq ibn Shihab reported, a man asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, what is the best you had? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, a word of truth in front of a tyrannical ruler. Musnad Imam Ahmed hadith, 1000 18,449. Also, please, how would you advise me to deal with people online who call me medkhali because I stop them from insulting the Sheikh? May Allah preserve him. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your hirs ala khair wa sunnah wa ilm wa fiqh. Ameen. And bless us all with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, uh, unfortunately, I haven't come across, I, I've heard the hadith, but I haven't uh, come across uh, and been able to find it any particular explanations that would require me doing some research, and I definitely do not have the time to do so, um, unfortunately. But in the context of other nasus, we know uh, that the asl for Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is obedience to the Muslim ruler. And that includes the tyrannical ruler. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the details very shortly. And if this is an authentic hadith, and I've heard this hadith many times, and uh, that a word of truth in front of a tyrannical ruler. Uh, speaking the truth, we're always ordered to speak the truth to, to whoever it is, regardless of whether it's a, a tyrannical ruler or not. That does not mean, however, that you uh, aggressively address the leader or approach them uh, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that we have other Nasus that explain that the correct way to give advice to the Muslim ruler is behind closed doors, you know, in a, in a way of it advising. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which is also in a Sahih Muslim, قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ دِينَ نَصِيحَ دِينَ نَصِيحَ دِينَ نَصِيحَ قَالَ لِمَنْ قَالَ لِلَّهِ وَلِكِتَابِهِ وَلِرُسُولِهِ وَلِآئِمَّةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَمَّتِهِمْ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the deen is sincere advice. And one of, the, of those who he mentioned the sincere advice is, is to the leader. Immatul Muslimin, so the leaders of the Muslims, that you give sincere advice. So the leader should be given sincere advice, but of course that doesn't come from just everyone. This doesn't come just from the guy on the street, and he's going to uh, probably even have access to the leader. And nor does it mean that we protest, nor does it give a, a authority to uh, curse the leaders or yell out, nor does it give authority to speak on the mimbar, openly about the leaders or criticizing the leaders. And those that's the difference between Ahlul Sunnah's understanding and, for example, Khwana Muslimin or Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra and many of the other groups and the contemporary groups who believe that and use this as evidence to uh, speak about the leaders and to confront the leaders in an aggressive way and to criticize the scholars and say, hey, we didn't hear them uh, address the leader on such and such point or such and such point, so then therefore they must not be doing it. This is their concept. And so Ahl Sunnah uh, does not uh, hold that same, uh, those same principles. And in the context in general, we know that Allah Azza wa Jalla says, الْكَرِيمُ وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَعَطِيُوا رَسُولُ وَأُولَ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And then he also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, tells us to obey the leaders who are charged in authority over us. But however, this is muqayyid. Those other ones are the itlaq. Okay? So these are principles of understanding the usuls. And, and from usul al fiqh, that we have. The, the, the obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger 
is ala itlaq. You know, there's no exception. That is what we're ordered to do. We're commanded to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in absolute. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal uh, said. So our divine purpose that we've been created for is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means total obedience to Him. Worship. What, what's greater than worship? As far as obedience. Taib. And we're, we're ordered to obey the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala itlaq. However, that does not mean worship. We don't worship the Prophet Wasallam, but we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadha wasila. That is the means. That is what authenticates our ibadah. Because ibadah is built upon two pillars. Or ikhlas wa mutaba'ah. That it is sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is by being obedient to uh, a, 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 following the Messenger وسلم, the Sunnah of the Prophet However, the obedience to the leader is muqayyid. It is restricted. It is not absolute ta'a. And let's look, we're going to look at what Imam Tahawi says, because this gives you the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. وَلَا نَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا نُنَازَ يَدًّا مِنْ طَاعَتِهِمْ وَنَّرَى طَاعَتِهِمْ مِنْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَّلْ فَرِيدًا مَا لَمْ يَعْمُرُوا بِمَعْسِيَةِ وَنَدْعُوا لَهُمْ بِالصَّلَاحِ وَالْمُعَافَةِ طيب إمام الطهاوي رحمة الله عليه he mentioned he says and we do not believe in revolting against our leaders and the, those in charge of authority over us, meaning the Muslim rulers, even if they are tyrannical or oppressive. And we do not supplicate against them. So I know, I know the Tekfiris don't like this, and they hate that the, the, the scholars in Saudi make dua for the leaders and the scholars of Ahl-Sunnah around the world, whether it be in Yemen, whether it be in Egypt, whether it be, they, they supplicate for the leaders. They want the leaders to have Islam because this is what Imam Ahmed was doing. This is what the uh, Immat sunnah were doing in the past. طيب. He says, and, and supplicate, uh, 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 and we don't supplicate against the leaders. Quran Muslimin does, the Takfiris do. And we don't remove our hands from obedience to them, and we believe in obeying them in obedience to Allah, and that is an obligation. And as long as they are not commanding you to do sinfulness, and we do we supplicate for, for, for them for their health and for their rectification. Right. That's the, the, that is the menhaj of the Salaf. That's the methodology of the Salaf Zari. Imam uh, Ibn Abi Izz, one of the most famous ex uh, people who explained uh, Imam Tahawi's uh, book, Aqidat al Tahawiyyah, he said, Fakadalla kitabi wa sunna ala wujub ta'at ul al amr. And without getting into, okay, we need this though. Malam ya marubi ma'asiyatin, fata'am al qawluhu ta'ala. أَطِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَطِيُوا رُسُوهُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ كَيْفَ قَالْ وَأَطِيُوا رُسُوهُ وَلَمْ يَقُولْ وَأَطِيُوا الْأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ طيب. So he's explaining what we just said. He said, And the Quran and the Sunnah show it's an obligation to be obedient to uh, the Muslim leader. As long as he does not command you to disobedience. And then he says, Reflect upon the statement of Allah where he says, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those charged in authority from amongst you. And, it, and he's basically saying what I just said, which is that this, uh, that thought, the, the obedience to the leader is restricted. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُوا رُسُولُ قَالَ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Uh, 
Malik wa darba dhahrik. The Prophet ﷺ said, hear and obey the Muslim leader uh, in that which you like and that which you dislike, uh, even if he uh, you know, takes your wealth and beats your back. So it lets us know it's very important to obey the leaders. The Prophet ﷺ said uh, also that uh, the, uh, that he said, obey the leader in Ya'muru fi the umira bi ma'asiyatin fi la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet ﷺ said, obey the Muslim leader, fear Allah and obey the Muslim leader. And if he commands you to do good, then there's no hearing and obeying him. And Ahlul Sunnah understands that to mean in that command. It doesn't negate the complete obedience of the ruler. So, for example, a ruler that says, hey, you need to take riba or whatever the case may be, something unlawful. And, you know, your duty is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. So you do not obey them in that. You do not obey them in that unless there's going to be mufasid a'zam. So these are other big principles and I don't want to get too off track. But in general, there's no obedience to the creation over obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, so that means the, the leader's uh, obedience to the Muslim leader is restricted. It's muqayyid, as long as it's in accordance with obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. But, however, as we know from the Sunnah and the Usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is not rebelling against the leader. And this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wa kathrata adilla. There's so much adilla. If you just go to Sahih Muslim Bas, and then if you look at all the, 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 the books of the Salaf, you'll have a much better understanding. Taib. Uh, also, how would you advise me to deal with people online who call me medically because I stopped them from insulting the Shaykh, may Allah preserve him. For one, I would say don't engage with tekfiris. Number two, don't engage online in debates with people. If that comes up, and it's not affecting your honor and for you to jump into every conversation that someone's uh, uh, speaking about the Shaykh or speaking about any of the ulama. Because our ulama are not masum, for one. Our ulama, they get things correct and they make mistakes. Okay, so we don't defend anyone ala itlaq. We defend them in accordance with their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with their in accordance with how they adhere to the haq, to the truth. So it is not something for you to, to get frustrated about and something to waste your time with even. I get called medically and jami. I just, some uh, ISIS supporter just made takfir of me and just made a long question and said I was jahil and said this and this and this and asked me for evidence that ISIS is khawarij. I think we can turn the tables and easily say that this person seems to be ill-informed and uh, fit the description of jahil. Because if you don't know, I, I don't know what else to say to you, but I... Am addressing that as well. The point is, Ahabatifillah, don't waste your time. Benefit. Go forward. Learn the book of Allah. Learn the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and practice your Islam. Come closer to Allah and die upon that. Don't get into those side debates. Don't worry about what someone's calling you because people will never cease to attack you. They will never cease to attack you. And they will never cease to attack Ahl Sunnah. And they will never cease to attack the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. But the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Sunnah will prevail until the hours established. The Prophet said, He said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth until the command of Allah, you know, to the hours established, and they'll be on that. Letting us know Ahl Sunnah Mujud, well, Ahl Sunnah will continue to be present. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah bless us to be from Ahl Sunnah.